And I just like to thank all of you for showing up today. This is our official first official STEM session and it'll be going over how to start a club. And we're thinking about having these every two weeks or so. And at the end of each course, I hope you guys are all taking the Python course we're offering right now. And at the end of each course, we will have a guest speaker come in and talk about their achievements. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna talk about how to start a club. If you guys have any questions, please save them until the end and let's do this. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. So as I said, today's session will be a how to start a club and it's I've titled it the eight steps to becoming a leader plus ideas. So I will just basically talk about the eight most important steps in my opinion of how to start a club in school or outside of school. And then I will give ideas, suggestions for fundraising, all that fun stuff. So please stay until the end. And just if you have questions, please save them until the end. So I'm gonna start by explaining the two types of clubs there are in my opinion. So there's a school club and a outside organization, nonprofit organization, whatever you wanna call it. So our organization, Girls Code It, falls under the category of organization, of course. And so the difference is, is that one is in school, obviously, and one is outside of school. And as you can imagine, the one that's outside of school probably has a lot more work involved in it. We have like a whole website. A lot of the school clubs are just based in school. And um, not all clubs fall under one or one category or the other. And as, as I'll show later with one of the club ideas, they can be both at once. But this is just the general separation. So the first step to forming a club is to find something you're passionate about. So you really have to find an idea that you like because then you'll be able to put more time into it and you'll be happier and you'll put in more time into the club and you'll be able to do it better. So the first step in this step is to brainstorm ideas. And you'll wanna brainstorm ideas because you can have a lot of ideas, but you also have to brainstorm if it'll work or not. And you have to see how willing you are to put time into that idea. Um, you could either build on a subject you like, such as Girls Code It. We're building on programming and coding and empowering girls in the STEM field. Or you can explore something entirely new. If you've recently become interested in art, you can form an art club so that for people who are also recently interested in art, they can join too. And just, if, you're, if it's a school club, make sure your club doesn't already have a club that's based on our idea because schools will not take duplicate clubs of each other. So just make sure your idea is unique, original, and it's something that you're passionate about. Step number two is to find a few friends to help you. So this step is important because you can't really start a club on your own. So if you find friends who are hardworking and willing to put time into your club's ideas, you can combine their ideas with yours and it'll make the club even better because it's all inclusive. And um, it's important to have a lot of members in your club. So just don't limit it to friends. I say friends because usually people when starting a club, they find their friends and from there they branch out. But just try to reach out to someone, form a club with them. If you have someone who has, if you know someone has the same interests as you in this club, then start the club with them. But having more friends and members in your club, by doing that, you can get feedback and improve on your own ideas. So um, just try to find, my tip for this one is to find hardworking and devoted members because you want members, you don't want to start a club with just friends who are there to take up the leadership positions, right? Because we all know there are some people who do that but you want to find devoted members who are willing to put the time into your club and have fun with it and work to make it bigger so for example all of us in girls code it not all of us are friends but for example i joined because my friend who is the vice president asked me to join and we're all hard working and devoted to coding and from there, we can meet other people from our website. So that's a little bit different. In school, it's easier because you know most of the people. But just my last take on this is to try and find friends and members who are devoted and willing to put the work in and very also like your idea because you don't want them joining and then saying that they want another idea. So step number three is to find an advisor. And usually this is a requirement for all school clubs. 
because um, you need someone who to have their like room open for you to meet in. And you also need them to give you advice because the advisor has to, you have to have an advisor to monitor how your club's doing, what they have. Even in outside organizations, it's good to have some, an adult to reach out to because problems can be caused that and you need to involve an adult. And so the advisor can also help with the registration process of your club, which I'll talk about later. But the registration process in most schools is difficult, especially since it's not always made clear. And a lot of students end up doing it on their own if they want a club because a lot of people have work in school. But then again, this doesn't really apply to outside organizations like Girls Coded because we didn't really have a registration process. It's just for school. And an advisor can also provide a room to meet in, which is also good because you kind of you can't just meet on the lunch tables usually, but um, if you want it to be an official club. And just make sure to explain your goals and expectations for their involvement, because an advisor will only join your club if they know what's involved, what they have to be involved in. Because usually a lot of the advisors in schools, especially, have multiple clubs that they're monitoring. And so it'll be good to have um to have them know if you're expecting them to like say drive you or be present at events outside of school then they'll have to know that beforehand because you can't just tell them oh yeah we needed you to do this and they might say no because usually teachers have a lot of work to do and um that'll just make it harder on them and on yourselves because it won't allow you to have those events that you want so just make sure you tell your advisor what you expect of them and make sure to have an advisor if you're in your school. I, most schools need an advisor and it's better to have one. Once again, I'm saying just for a room and for advice. Step number four is to check with your school. So a lot of schools have registration process for clubs. You can't just say, I'm gonna start this club for members and expect the school to go with that. In a lot of schools, they have to accommodate many, many, many different clubs. So each school has different registration processes and you have to pay attention to that and um, so that you can actually make a valid club in your school and there's a lot of deadlines for this stuff because um, again this step is only for school clubs but um, there's a lot of deadlines like when you have to turn in this form and when you have to turn in that form like club constitutions and all that sort of fun stuff but just make sure to be aware of those deadlines and follow them really, really closely. Make sure you're really um, on task for that. And step number five, I call divide and conquer, but it's basically to divide up the roles in your board positions because you don't wanna be the dictator of your club, right? You wanna have a large set of friends and other members to help you. And if you divide board positions, you'll be able to have more um, ideas and that way your club will be more inclusive and people will wanna join more. So just allow your club members to vote on a board because that is showing that you care about their opinions and more people will wanna join because their opinion is being heard. Also, ideally, I'm saying this as a, a girls code experience, but you should have, especially in school and outside organizations, um, I'll talk about how it's a little bit different there, but in school, your club, a lot of schools just want a president, vice president, and secretary, and maybe sometimes a treasurer, but it's good to have a communications director too. And these clubs and these positions can have multiple members in them just so that you can, if your club is really large, and to make it as inclusive as possible. And so the president or co-presidents, I'll talk a little bit about expanding later, but the presidents will plan the majority of the events and run the whole club as a whole. That's basically their job is to keep the club together, right? And the vice president can will assist the presidents because usually the president's job, especially if your club slash organization is really large, the presidents will have a lot to work on. So the vice president will help them with that. And that way, um, the workload is divided and the club can function better. The secretary can keep track of participation and write down any ideas or questions that club members or board members may have. It's important to keep track of ideas because as I said, you wanna be, it's really important to be inclusive in the club. 
So you'll want to include as many people as possible and that involves writing down their ideas, using them to better your club. And um, yeah, so the secretary basically does that. The treasurer is in charge of the budget if your club has a budget. So not all clubs have budgets. Usually school clubs don't. And um, I'll talk about that a little bit more later in the next slide. But usually um, outside of organizations, um, like for example, Girls Code is a nonprofit organization. So we don't currently have a treasurer. We're thinking about it just because we want to make a club better. But if you're just starting out, you, know, you don't always need money to start out your club. Um, but the, if you have a budget, if your club is going to be really big, and for example, if you're extending from like a charity organization, then you'll need a treasurer to keep track of the money that they're donating to those organizations. So the treasurer is the one in charge of the budget. And the communications director sends out emails, which is really important because you really want to notify your members of your meetings beforehand. You don't want to tell them the day before, oh, hey, guys, we're going to have a club meeting tomorrow because not all of them would make it. And that really discourages members because they don't know what's going on and they'll just want to um, get out of the club because um, it's very unorganized. So the communications director's job really makes the club organized and scheduled so that because they send out emails notifying the members of any changes, events, or meetings. So making different jobs helps the club become organized and efficient, more organized and more efficient. So um, dividing the roles helps with organization because the workload is divided and it's not just all um, on top of one person. It's not all on top of you. As I said, we don't want to be a dictatorship. We want to have like a parliament, I guess. <laughs> but um, making different jobs helps with that. And it also improves the efficiency of the club because dividing the workload means that the different work, the, all the work can be done quicker. And that way your club becomes better and it's able to attract more members. And it's important to allow other leadership positions because we're not a dictatorship, but um, it's important to allow other leadership positions because other people contribute their ideas. And by combining your ideas with other ideas, you're being inclusive, allowing for people to benefit your club and that really helps um, to make your club better and more inclusive because as I said the one important takeaway for a club is to have it be inclusive because then more people want to join and um, oh yeah this is my tip so allow for clubs to have for club positions to have two members if your club is very large so you can have more than two you don't want to have like a whole group for each position because that may be a little bit unorganized. But if you have multiple members for each position, then it, especially if your club is really large, like for Girls Code, we have at least two people on each position. But um, it helps with the workload dividing it. And as I said, dividing the workload makes the um, club process much more efficient and it gets the work done quicker. And so step number six is optional. It depends on your club, but it's to plan a budget. And I just want to talk about this one because it is important sometimes. But some schools have events where clubs can collect money. For example, in my school, we have this thing, it's called a club rush, where we each buy um, like food items and we sell them for a higher price to make profit. And that way we get money for a club. And for a lot of clubs, this is necessary because you need money to function. If you're going to plan a big event where everyone goes somewhere, you have to pay for buses, for food, and for, tra for transportation, there's buses, but all that stuff you have to pay. Or if you're planning a technology competition related club, you have to pay the registration fee. And that's just where the budget comes into play. But not all clubs, especially if you're new to starting a club and if, you're, if your club is small in the beginning, and you don't really need a budget you as it gets larger then but you so as i talked about you have to decide what the club needs and how you're gonna get all that money because if it's an insanely large cost you're going to have to go out and require more money and usually that's what puts a lot of people off because they don't have the funds for that so just start small is my advice and grow your club larger and as it grows larger you can get a budget and you can have people donate to your club or you can hold fundraising events, which I'll talk about later. 
And my third um, point for this is that this can be a separate job headed by the treasurer. As I talked about the last slide, the treasurer is the specific uh, handles, specifically handles the budget if there is one. And usually school clubs, as I said, don't have a budget, but if you're gonna collect money um, for an event or something, um, then it's good to have a budget planned so that you know how much you spend, how much you already have. So step number seven is to plan ahead. And planning ahead is important because you have to schedule your meetings beforehand in order for people to come. As I talked about, the communications director's job is really, really important. Because imagine that you're a club member and you get an email like the day before and it says, tomorrow we're gonna have a club meeting. Would you go to that meeting? I wouldn't because it's just, I might have too much on my plate at that moment. I might be too stressed out and I just wouldn't want to deal with it. Or I would forget if you know something for a while beforehand, if you get reminders about it, then it helps to remember. So you want to plan ahead, make sure your meetings correspond with as many um, members uh, calendars as possible because you can't schedule a meeting and expect people to show up because they people not always put your club first. They might have other time commitments that they've made beforehand. And a, a, an important tip is to ask um, what days and times works for people, like through email, maybe say, um, we'll have, we're planning on having like a, our meetings Wednesday or Thursday. Please respond with the day that you will more, more like you most want the club to meet and is most convenient for you. And coming up with events that people can go to <laughs> is very encouraging and engaging to your members. And also I want to talk about um, planning events. So different clubs need to plan different events. For example, um, let's say that your club is the Interact Rotary Club and they go and they build houses for people. They help build houses for people who need homes for the homeless. And, um, you have to plan the event. So you have to tell your members when that event is going to be beforehand. You can't just tell them like Saturday, we're going here because no one will want to come. So you want to make sure you know about those dates and that you communicate that to your members beforehand. And finally, our last step is partnering. And I know this may seem like a big goal because if you're starting out small, you usually start small and then get bigger and bigger and bigger. But partnering is important because it expands your um, club. It expands your club's influence. For example, um, I'm going to give an example with Girls Code It. We're currently partnering with an organization called Girlplex, and they are on the East Coast. And as you can imagine, in California, we are very far away from the East Coast because we're based in California and we're a small club. But through making our meetings and our website and through um, and through reaching out to people through social media and all that stuff, we have managed to gain their support and we have partnered with them. So now, even though we're based way on the west coast of the US, we have influence in the east coast too. People on the east coast know about us. That partnering is um, makes your club larger and have a greater influence because you want to know that as many people will be able to join your club as possible. And that involves making it bigger, making it more, and you wanna make people wanna to come to that club and expanding its influence can be done through partnering. And so now I'm gonna talk about ideas for clubs. And um, my first club ideas are the classes. So we have the book club, the key club and homework club. And I'm sure you guys have heard about those. In classics, the problem with classics is that usually your school has them if you want to make it a school club, because usually these are school clubs. I think most of my ideas are based on school clubs, but um, these classics are the first one that, like, for example, my school has about 150, maybe 100 clubs. And you can imagine that they probably already have a book club and a key club and a homework club, right? So you want to have an idea that is really original. But if your school doesn't have these, it's a great way to start because most people will know about that and more people want to start these because they're so well known. And um, homework club, I just want to say, is an amazing idea because 
it involves people getting together and helping each other with homework after school and that can be amazing to students because a lot a lot of people will need help but they're too afraid to reach out and so a club can be a really stress-free environment to reach out to someone for help that's necessary um so my second one which um is really popular is partnering with a charity organization and this one is an amazing cause charity organizations are amazing because people um this is basically based on helping other people and with charity organizations you can also get volunteering hours which is often used to encourage members to join but it's just a great cause like you're helping other people and these are just three but operation smile make a wish and save the children are really well known and usually these are throughout the whole country or even expand outwards from that. Operation Smile helps um, gain money or donates money for to kids to get surgery if they have the cleft lip. And you're bettering um, people's lives by donating money, fundraising, and charity organizations, a lot of people join because it's such a great cause. And for Make-A-Wish, I was gonna talk about um, how clubs can overlap between a school club and an outside organization. So um, Make-A-Wish expands by letting students have school clubs outside or just be chapter presidents outside of school or even just have fundraisers. So um, I'm gonna give an example with a school nearby me. If they have host a fashion show and donate all of that money to Make-A-Wish. And Make-A-Wish is actually, they collect money and they um, find and they use that those resources to buy stuff that kids really want but can't get and they gift it to them. And it's amazing, but um, the great thing is that it doesn't, it's very flexible. Make-A-Wish allows for people to be, uh, for students to start a club in school and expand from there, or they could just be chapter presidents because usually starting an outside organization is easier because you don't have to, um, the registration process, I mean, because there is none, but usually it's harder to um, work with. So I just wanted to let you guys know that it doesn't limit to just school club or organization. It could be both or, yeah. And my third tip is trying a STEM club. So Girls Coded is a STEM club. We are based on coding, and but we're also based on empowering girls and encouraging girls to enter the coding um, field and overall STEM field. And so these are just a few options, but there are so many different STEM clubs and competitions. So you could find a competition, a team competition, and start forming a team. And that could be your club. For example, the Science and Ocean Bowl is like trivia, but for Science and Ocean. And you go and you have the competition and you answer questions as a team and you gain points like that. Robotics is also really fun. The two robotics clubs at my school are VEX and FRC. And both are amazing because people join because you're able to create something with your hands and then go on a competition and um, experiment with that. Coding is also really good because programming and software development are so high in demand for jobs and literally every STEM field has been very high demand. So I really encourage you guys to pursue a STEM interest. But fourth option is to explore an artistic talent. Artistic talents are amazing because they are they can they allow you to show your creativity. They allow you to um, and they just allow you to be like use a hobby for to develop. Or even if you want to go into the art um, industry, this really helps because it lets you teach and be taught art. And so these are just a few. So photography, art review magazine, comic book club. These all sound really fun. And um, they're very creative and they're very flexible with what you can do. And um, they usually have a very stress-free environment, which brings me to our last option, which is just fun and stress-free clubs. And usually these are um, used in school. But uh, you, so imagine your school day is really stressful, right? And how awesome would it be to go, let's say, to lunch or an after school club that just involves like a Harry Potter Kahoot? Um, a lot of people are obsessed with Harry Potter. I am. And um, <laughs> these are just um, basically small, silly debate topics like which house do you prefer and 
stuff like that. Or you can have a magic club. Magic clubs are awesome because you get to learn a whole new talent, which is amazing. Magic is so great. And cooking just allows for a stress-free hobby that you could develop. And if, especially with um, a lot of cultures in your school, a lot of uh, different ethnicities, if you form a cooking club, then you can develop it into an international club, which includes cooking and um, customs from different ethnicities and so on. So those are just some ideas for clubs to start. And now I'm gonna talk about tech clubs specifically because we are a tech club and we really uh, encourage students, our students to go into these. So tech clubs are amazing, as I said before, because they offer a um, jump start into the STEM industry. And right now the STEM industry is very, um, it's looking for a lot of people. So if you pursue a STEM interest, then you will most definitely find a job. And I don't want it to sound just because of that, but STEM is an amazing field, an amazing subject. My favorite uh, school subjects are always STEM subjects because they allow you to experiment, visualize, they allow you to do everything. And I just, some ideas for tech clubs are, for of course, Girls Code It is a tech club that empowers girls to code. Because right now, so we don't have a lot of girls in coding and um, in STEM industries, and we really seek to bridge that gender gap that is forming. And we want to encourage girls to apply for STEM related jobs because a lot of girls are intimidated by it. I, um, last year, I took a STEM class in which I was the only girl, and that can really intimidate a lot of um, women and they want to drop those and they'll want to pursue something with more girls in it. And there is a lot of sexism in these industries where people um, look on um, and it's just harder for girls to apply. But we're seeking to bridge that because there is no way to fix this without pushing girls into the STEM field. We have to um, try and do this stuff because it is better for us and we have the opportunity to do it. So for tech clubs, we um, you can have, there's a lot of local opportunities to visit tech companies. And that's not necessarily the big ones. The big ones, it's usually through school, through an advisor who talks to them and they bring you in as a school trip. But smaller companies, can ha you can have your club visit them and thus learn about their opportunities for work, what they do, and it's just a fun experience. It's almost like an internship except for like an hour, but <laughs> and you're just learning about it. And also working with other businesses. So you could, some of these businesses um, extend to members, to students trying to form clubs. And it really helps because um, a lot of people don't know from where to start. And these businesses sponsor these causes to um, push more people into the STEM field because it is the major one right now in the world today. If you see, if you look around, there is technology everywhere and it's so important to be involved in that. And also this one is kind of like an um, additional point, but looking for STEM related events at libraries. Libraries have, and there could be other places, but I know for sure that libraries have a lot of STEM related um, events, including little um, organizations that develop their businesses in there. And you can, we also have, we all know um, an hour of code, right? And schools develop that, but you can also work with that and you can spark your interest of, for coding there or through organizations like Girls Code, which I'm so happy you guys have joined because that means you're pursuing a, an interest that you like and that will be so useful to you. So moving on, I'm gonna talk about some fundraising ideas. And fundraising ideas include bake sales, which I'm sure all of us have heard of where people bake and the, all the donations go to the club. Science fairs are amazing, especially for technology related clubs because students have the opportunity to show what they have made and earn money in the process for their club. Movie nights are also great because they, make a stress-free environment for students to come to and they pay for that um, entertainment. 
and that can be used to fuel your club. Scavenger hunts are fun. School Olympics are also fun. Like School Olympics and fashion show, I feel like, go together because they can be a whole school effort and everyone will want to participate. And you don't even have to raise money for a club. You can raise awareness for a club, like raise awareness how we do um, Breast Cancer Week, for example. Um, and it's just you're raising awareness for that cause. So, um, or you can have a craft fair where that's kind of goes in with science fair, both crafts, it all gains money for your club, right? And fundraising.com, if you guys want to write that down, that is an amazing website because a lot of stores and um, businesses will lower their costs for products if your club, if your club reaches out to them and sales and like says, we want to sell this and gain money from it and profit from it so that we can use it to fuel our club or donate it to a charity organization. Like for example, you can buy like a whole bag of lollipops for um, a very low cost and then sell each lollipop for a higher cost at your school fair, for example. And that's just helpful to profit your club. And I think, okay, and we're almost done. And I just want to say that the most important thing is to choose something that you're really passionate about and that you'll have fun and put time into it. Because if you're not passionate about this club idea, then it won't last long because eventually you'll get tired of it. You'll get tired of having to deal with it. So just try to find something that you're interested in. All right, this is the time where you guys can ask questions. I will stop sharing and feel free to write them in chat or unmute yourselves and speak. Thank you for listening to the presentation. All right, thank you everyone for coming. I really appreciate you supporting our first STEM session. We believe the next one is going to be an intro to GitHub. These are amazing if you want to um, pursue like small interests other than coding, but make sure to sign up for our coding classes. They are free. We will teach um, Python until I think the end of November or mid-November, and then we start web development courses. So just make sure to sign up for those. Um, it'll really help you guys. Tech clubs are amazing, support us. And also come, make sure to come to our next STEM session in two weeks on Friday at 4 p.m. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us.